Alright, morning YouTube. I actually have another inverter I'm going to test. We're going to see if this bad boy is the same, have the same guts, if not better than the last inverter I had. This one was also around 15, 16 bucks. Um, I think I just went through the list and found every uh, cheap inverter I possibly could on Amazon and bought. So, and I've been wanting to do this for a hot minute, but let's unbox this bad boy. And it's made by Beast Tech. I'm guessing that's how you say it. So let's unbox this bad boy. Move this out of the way. And it's pretty much the same packaging as the last one, so it makes me wonder. Uh, made in the same factory, or the same people. And this one actually does say it is modified sine wave. So this one actually says it. That one does not. So we got this. Let's check out some specs. And you'll have to fast forward through this if you want. But uh, two USB, and here's the specifications. It, da, 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 you have two ports here. You have one that's 2.4 amp and one that is 4.2 amp. Or it's 4.2 amps for both ports. So, okay, so I'll be testing both of those. It's 150 watts. The max voltage is 15 volts. So, all right. And it does have uh, low voltage protection and over voltage protection. So I'll be testing the over current protection. <laughs> to be honest with you, that's probably the only thing I'll be testing. So, all right, so let's get started. And I did notice that this one actually has a nice cord. So you can actually take the cord off of this one. And it's like a... I actually like the design of this one better. Alright, so let's plug it in. Actually, let's we already know it's modified sine wave, but let's plug it in and confirm, which I'm sure it is. And that fan is FUBAR. Bam. All right, so it is modified sine wave. Whoa, we already knew that. So you can tell that by boom, 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 boom. It's a square wave. So we know that. So let's test the USB ports. All right, this says 2.4 for each. So you can actually do up to 4.2 amps. So got that plugged in, and this one actually from the last one actually has a lower voltage. Because this one's 4.96. 4.96. And let's add some load. Fans going 2.4, 2.4 on that one. Go ahead and unplug that. Go ahead, put that in there. 2.4 on that one. And it says you can handle up to 4 amps, but let's see. Oh, it kicked it out. So it does kick it out. All right, so those work. So let's do a load test on this bad boy. All right, and then we'll take it apart and see what's on in the inside. All right, so. Like I said, for $16, I'm not expecting uh, too much on this thing. But 
we'll go ahead and get her going. So, power's on. Let's power this bad boy up. Didn't like that. It's making all kinds of noises. Let's get it up to 150 and then we'll see. We'll do a five minute test. Alright, so we're sitting about 143. We need to add a little bit more. And the fan just started kicking on. All right, so we're sitting about 147. Light bulb is powered, and she is running at full blast. So we will punch her up here and let it sit for five minutes. And see if we have any uh, issues with it. All right, so it's been about five minutes. And we have, it appears we have, still have 150 watts, 148, it's actually gone up a little bit since we started, but let's check and see how hot this wiring is. The last one I tested, oh wow, okay, that's even worse than last time, that's hot. But the crazy part is the plug's hotter this time. Okay, that's smoking, so, all right, so let's uh, try to see if we can get this thing to cut out and uh, turn itself off, so what I'll do here is if you guys can see, is I'll increase it and keep increasing it until it cuts off. So 173, and I am maxed, <laughs> maxed on that light bulb. So it's actually got more in it, but oh, and I spoke too soon, it cut off. Okay, so it handled about 180 for about 20 seconds. So, and I had my light bulb maxed out, which it was probably the inverter that wasn't able to produce enough wattage. So, all right, so I'll unplug this, or I'll unplug this, and that thing is screaming. All right, so that's hot. Actually, the plug's not too hot. The wiring is, the wiring's up there. So, I'll unplug this, bam. Plug this back in just for safety wise. I'm going to turn this on and try to get try to get some of that residual power out of there. But let's take this thing apart. Take this off. I'm gonna cut this off so I don't kill the battery. And uh, let's take it apart. So we got four Phillips screws. And I'm sure this thing's gonna smell like burnt electronics now. I've done uh, <laughs> put it through its paces for five minutes. I mean, it didn't drop any. I mean, I give it that. So, but I do not recommend this for any kind of sensitive electronics, mainly because it's modified sine wave. You could charge, uh, like if you're on a job site or something like that. I don't think that like a Ryobi charger or you know Milwaukee charger pull more than 150 watts so you technically could use this for uh, um, 
job site use, I guess. And uh, I'll show you, I'll plug in um, how many amps it was pulling on the battery too, because I can actually do that as well. All right, so there's the little fan that it has. The fan, and that's why that thing is screaming. But I don't know how good that fan's actually going to do anything to this thing because the, the heat that this thing was pushing off, that little fan is not going to dissipate it. I'm telling you that right now. So, get this pushed through. All right, so, got it apart. Okay. And it does, like the last one, have a 25 amp fuse. And I'm guessing that this board right here and the other board, which I really don't want to touch anything. Um, so I'm guessing that these are all control boards for, you know, load protection and stuff like that. And I don't believe the last one had that. I think it may have had something similar to this on that one, but it does. This does have beefier wiring for the power plug, though. The actual Allen, that's a heck of a lot beefier than the other one was. The wires were so thin going into this. And uh, USB plugs are hardwired to that. And they got little pieces of insulation. <laughs> Which, I mean, it makes sense, I guess, but... I mean, at that point, dude, you might as well just not have done it right there. That little piece. And I hate to say it, but the, the cooling factor on this thing, I see what they were trying to do. They were trying to put everything, if you look, in line of this fan. But that fan is not going to move air past this. There's, no, there's too much of a restriction. And that thing is screaming. On fire, um, but this little fan is not going to move air past all this electronics right here, mainly because there's nothing on this side. I mean, you have these little little holes right here, but everything's blocked, so to dissipate the heat, it's not going to happen. Which is probably why this thing is running or screaming when you got full load on it. So. I imagine if you had some more airflow, this thing would run a lot cooler. But the last one, the case, like on on the case part, they actually had the MOSFETs. Or MOSFETs or transistor, I, whatever they're called. Anyways, they basically had them with like a T-bar with some thermal paste to, to this as making the whole case a heat sink. Which is a good idea, but it also had... A much larger fan so I'll show you and that fan is like twice as big but it's pulling air through the case through these holes so it's actually better built but both of them I do not recommend for sensitive electronics mainly because uh, it's modified sine wave which everybody probably already knew that this LTPO thing is going to going to be a modified sine wave. That's the cheapest way to do uh, an inverter. Um, I was trying to find a whole bunch of pure sine wave inverters um, to test. It's trying to see if uh, some, some were fakes, some weren't. But uh, yeah, I only got all of these modified ones and I do not recommend half of them. So far, this one got extremely hot. This one actually worked pretty good, but they need to update the wiring. Like this one, it looks like it has beefier wires going to it too. And it's still, this, I guess it's high resistance in, in this wiring. And it just was screaming. Um, in, in a car, nine times out of 10, this thing, you're gonna have this thing plugged in and Basically, what's going to happen is you're going to get it between the seat. It's going to get hot. And I get it. It's, it's fused for 25 amps. But when that thing's running, it's just going to keep running until it hits 25 amps. Or 
you know, whatever your car cigarette lighter or um, power outlet is rated for. So if it's rated for like 15 amps, which this is what you would need for something like this um, to run. It, it's it's gonna get hot. It, it's it's just gonna get way too hot. And it, like I said, this is perfect for just literally falling between your seat and getting hot and causing a fire. Uh, I don't recommend this. If you're using this on a job site to charge your Ryobi batteries or you know your Milwaukee batteries for you know construction work or stuff like that, perfect. But or charging your phone because it does have the USB. Um. I don't recommend you using this for, you know, off-grid kind of situations for the long term. If you're going to run something for a long period of time. One, for sensitive electronics, it's not going to work. Two, uh, it's a fire hazard because of uh, this right here. And, of course, on this one right here. It's the same thing. Every single one of them, the wires got to the point where you cannot touch them. So... That's the conclusion, and I'll slap this back together, and you guys have a good one. Oh, by the way, like and subscribe, um, comment. Um, I appreciate all your questions. Um, the last video I made was mainly made because of a guy commenting. So, I plan on doing this every weekend. I enjoy doing it. Um, you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Later.